Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of From Start to Part. In this video, I'm gonna continue the Psychotic Break Build series, and I'm going to specifically take the ring gear out of a Servo City 22 millimeter planetary gearbox and reduce its weight by about 12 grams. It does a couple things. One, it of course saves weight, which is very needed in Psychotic Break, but it also allows me for better mounting. So let's see how I take this big heavy ring gear and make it into this. In the front of me, I have several of these 22 millimeter gear boxes. They look a little something like this before I go and destroy them. I've got a bunch of them sitting here and you can see that the ring gear is one of the largest pieces. And the only thing that we can really shave any weight off of everything else, you know, it just kind of has to be what it is. So you've got this ring gear and this weighs in about 25 grams, which in a beetle weight is pretty significant. And if we look at it, we can see that there's a lot of material around here. And this thing is steel. We just really don't need all this material. So all I'm doing is just removing some from all sides. And all I'm doing in SolidWorks is I'm basically just taking and making a 16.5 millimeter square and then cutting everything else off the side of that. So it's a pretty simple operation. We just need to figure out how to hold this and actually machine it. I had this little piece of stock left over. This is actually one of the wedge mounts for crippling depression. But I had this left over because it was a good size and well, it was just free, something I had sitting down the box. So all I did is take one of these ring gears and drill a hole pattern on the top of this and then using the screws that come with the planetary gearbox, just basically screw them into the aluminum. Now you could tap this, but I did not have an M2 tap, which is what these are at the time. So I just drew, drilled a hole that was just slightly smaller than it needed to be. And if you do that, you can find that these will kind of thread their own way in. So it's really just as simple as that, is just drilling a hole pattern on a little block of aluminum, and then this should just screw right on top. And then once this is screwed in place, you can just simply mount it on the mill and then just machine around it. So yeah, there you go. You just put in the four screws and then we can just run the end mill around the outside and get something like that. So let's go look at the mill. Once everything is mounted up into the vise, it's just a matter of using the Heimer to find the center of this gear. And um, what I do is I usually start with the x-axis, you know, kind of roughly line it up with the left side, touch off of it, hit zero, and then go to the opposite side. And then what you can do in PathPile is you can actually just kind of zero off of the opposite side and then in PathPilot in the DRO, you just do divide by two and then that will translate to the center because you're finding the left side as zero, the right side is the um, you know, positive extreme, and if you divide that by two, then you get the center. And I just repeat this in the Y direction. Then I just repeat this whole process just to make sure you're not on a curve or you know, if there's any weird issues there. The first part went as expected. Um, I'm not really gonna go into the cam on this because it's really just simple. I'm basically just cutting a square really on the outside. Um, I'm using a five flute end mill. This is what I used for like steel and a lot of hardened things like titanium and whatnot. Um, it's just a quarter inch end mill that's a five flute. And I'm running at about 3000 RPM. I think my feed rate is somewhere around 25 to 30 inches per minute and I have a 25 thou width of cut, and I think about a 15 thou depth of cut. So I'm doing this in four separate depths. I could have easily done this in three depths, and I could have also done a little bit more aggressive on the width, but the whole part only takes about four, four and a half minutes to do. I really just didn't want to do too much cutting forces against these little tiny M2 screws. That's really what it came down to. So I started out doing an adaptive cut just to kind of clear the bulk away. And then I did one full depth contour cut that just um, cut the whole thing all the way around to leave a nice clean edge so that you wouldn't see all these step downs. Thank you. 
The next part didn't go so well. I'm not entirely sure what happened here, but the x-axis just didn't end up responding, and so the end mill plunged into the wrong section of the gear, ended up just kind of plunging into the face of it, and that was not the plan. Um, of course, it ended up um, completely trashing the end mill. I almost lost the part. It lifted up a little bit out of the vise, so I just kind of had to recenter everything, and there is just kind of a nice big gouge in that gear, but it was salvageable, so not really sure what happened there. I'm talking with Tormach to see, you know, what the issue is, but the um, x-axis basically just locked up and didn't move, so that's really unfortunate. I ended up doing a total of four of these rings, and um, once I kind of figured out the x-axis, um, I just really oiled it up well, and um, I didn't have that sticking issue anymore, so we'll see if that persists. But the other three went just fine, and I was able to kind of get out of the way and get my head out of the um, shot and get some really nice footage of these cutting. Um, but yeah, it's pretty straightforward. The others um, ended up cutting well, and it was, yeah, yeah, somewhere around four minutes per part, so not a big deal. The last and final step, which is of course completely optional, is just to clean these up a little bit, um, deburr some of the edges off. Thankfully my drill press is capable of going up to like 5500 RPM, so I can kind of use it as like a little bench grinder, bench sander, so that was pretty helpful. So I just threw it on there, ramped it up to 3500 RPM, and um, just kind of buffed off um, some of the edges. So here is the finished product. I've got um, the four gears right here. And if we look at the original, you can see that it's about 25.1, 25.2, somewhere around there. And the new guys are about 13.2, 13.3. So there's about a 12 gram difference here. And if you have two gearboxes, which assumably you would, um, you're gonna be sitting about 24 grams worth of weight savings. It might not seem like a lot. I think it's only about 1.7% of a beetle weight, but 24 grams you can do quite a bit with. So I know I am very happy at saving 24 grams because I can easily put that elsewhere. And then also mounting this is difficult because it just kind of rotates around. Mounting these will be a lot easier because I can just kind of slide it down into the channel and hold it like that. The flanges stick out on either side, so it'll be really easy to hold. So hopefully this gives you a better idea of what this looks like and um, what the gears actually look like after being machined. Now, you don't need a CNC to do this. Any mill would work just fine. This would actually be a really ta easy task for a manual mill. You just need to make sure that you're rigid enough to cut steel, but this really wasn't that difficult to cut at all. So, as always, thanks for watching, and um, see you next time in the next Psychotic Break update. See you then.